You read in the Gospel of St. John, I think it's chapter 3 at the beginning. Jesus and his disciples go to the marriage feast at Cana. Cana. And they run short of wine, W-I-N-E, wine. So his mother comes to him and says, Son, look, these people are in a problem. They have run short of wine. Help them out. Believing that he's got mysterious powers to help these people solve the problem. So Jesus blurts out, according to the Bible, He says, woman, woman, what have I to do with thee? My time is not yet. Woman. In the whole of the 27 books of the New Testament, not once does he call his mother, mother. Woman, woman. I'm asking in the Hebrew language, is there no word for mother? This word woman he uses for the prostitute. Same word. You see, the woman who was caught, caught in the act, they bring her to Jesus. He said, look, this woman, we caught her in the act. What must we do to her? They're putting him to the test. They're trying to get him embroiled with the government or with the religious authorities. Either way, he loses. If he says, stone her, that was the law, book of Leviticus, that the adulterer and the adulteress must be stoned to death. If he says, stone her as a man of God, he must abide by the law. Stone her. And they would have stoned her and killed her. And if they were apprehended by the law, by the government, they said, look, our Messiah told us to. This is what our Messiah said. So he's in conflict with the government. Because adultery was not a capital crime in the Roman Empire, nor is it today in Christendom. It is not a crime at all. Adultery is no crime. Did you know that? Adultery is not a crime in any Christian nation on earth. It's not a crime. The law will not hold you responsible for committing adultery. He calls the prostitute, woman, where are thine accusers? So he says, no, they are all gone. So he says, all right, go and sin no more. Woman. He says, there's not a single place he calls his mother, mother, in the Bible. So he says, woman, what have I to do with thee? My time is not yet. So she persuades him. He says, look, man, help them out. These people are in difficulty. He says, all right, fill up the vats. You know, the wine vats with water. And they fill it up. And he turned the water into wine. And they drank. And they remarked, the drunkards of the night who have been drinking, imbibing all night. They're remarking, why have you kept the best wine for the last? The best wine, why have you kept it to the last? So my brother Jimmy Swaggart, he says in his book that that wine was pure grape juice. I said, brother, I didn't have a chance to talk about that. But I said, brother, swagat. You see, if a man has an imbibing wine for whole night, and the things run dry, and you give him pure grape juice, that grape juice is like mud water to him. Because there is a law involved. You drink 5% alcoholic drink, 5%, 5%, after a while, your senses are getting dulled. You need 10% to make you feel that it's alcohol something to give you a kick. Then you need 20% to make you to feel that there's something potency in it. You have to increase the alcoholic content to make you feel that it's better than the previous one, it's better than the previous one. If you give such a man grape juice, he says it's mud water, what is it? Insipid, no taste. <laughs> and he's telling us in his book called Alcohol, this is one of the, he's telling us, and I have no reason to contradict him unless you have. He said there are 11 million drunkards in America. 11 million drunkards. And 44 million heavy drinkers. Get that book, small book. I have a sample here, I think. Alcohol. 11 million drunkards and 44 million heavy drinkers. And he says, to me, there's no difference between the two. It means 55 million drunkards, as far as Jimmy Swaggart is concerned. In my country, they don't call them drunkards. It's an insult. The guy can punch you on the jaw if you call him a drunkard. You have to call him alcoholic. 
You know that woman is sickness. She's a sickness in his treatment. It's not a sin. Alcohol is not a sin. It's a sickness. Jimmy Swaggart calls a spade a spade. He said drunkards. 55 million drunkards in America. 11 million drunkards and heavy drinkers. I said, I make no difference. I said, yes, brother. I said, go a step further. Islam will take you a step further. He said, even your social drinkers are on the same level. They're breaking the laws and commandments of God as given in the last and final revelation of God. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, he said, whatever intoxicates in greater quantity is forbidden even in smaller quantity. No excuse for a nip or a thought. The Holy Quran says, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu, O you who believe, innam al-khamru, most certainly intoxicants, wal maisiru and gambling, wal ansabu and fortune telling, wal aslamu and idol worship, rizum minam al-shaytan, are an abomination of Satan's handiwork, fachtani buhu la'allakum tuflihun. It's a shan such abomination that you may prosper. And one pronouncement, he created the biggest society of teetotalers in the world. 1,000 million Muslims, as a people, as a whole, they don't imbibe that filth. We have our black sheep. We are not all angels. We know some Muslims can bring the Christian under the table. That we know. We are ashamed of them. But as a people, as a whole, the biggest society of teetotalers, people who don't imbibe, are the Muslims. And what did it? This word of God. This is a miracle. You perform a million miracles and you can't change people. Here, without any miracles, he transforms nations. This is a miracle. What miracle are you talking about? So, the Quranic first miracle of Jesus, he spoke and defended his mother against an unbelieving audience. The first miracle of Jesus, he turned water into wine. Since then, wine has flowed like water in Christendom. And there's no way out. The preachers... Jimmy Swaggart is telling us, there's a book called Preachers, and he's telling us in that book, he said at a church conference, all these preachers, the evangelists, the hot gospelers, the Bible thumpers, you know what they call them evangelists? Born again Christians? Yes, at a conference, we asked, somebody suggested this, look, those people who are against, the, 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 against alcohol, please stand up, that you can go out when you return, Preach in your churches against the evil of alcohol. Please stand up. And Jimmy Swaggart says, nobody stood up. That means they all opted for alcohol. Why? And they reason. Jimmy Swaggart said, the reasoning is, he said, look, our Lord Jesus turned water into wine. If it is good enough for our God, it's good for us. Good logic. If it's good for your God, it's good for you. He says, that was pure grape juice. I said, it is the same W-I-N-E wine, your Christian scholar says. W-I-N-E wine in Greek as the Lot, the prophet Lot, according to the Bible. He drank and cohibited with his daughters, committed incest night after night. Same W-I-N-E wine in Greek, that W-I-N-E wine and this W-I-N-E wine. I said, the only way out is, here, yeah, the last and final revelation of God. Jesus Christ tells you that I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You haven't got that capacity. You're not fit to receive. Solution to all the problems that I can give you. I can give, solve all the problems of mankind till doomsday. But you are not fit. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he, said, he will guide you into all truth. The spirit of truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things so shall he hear, that shall he speak. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. He said, that spirit of truth is Muhammad. And he truly glorified Jesus by absolving him from the calumnies of his enemies. His mother as well as Jesus. And the Christian world can never repay Muhammad for what he has done. What Muhammad has done for Jesus and for his mother. He is the true comforter, the true advocate of Jesus Christ. With these words, Mr. Chairman, I don't see the chairman around, but Mr. Chairman and my dear brethren, I stop here and give you the opportunity as was uh, suggested by the chairman that you have a time, you have the opportunity of asking questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, much Mr. Dieter, for this inspiring talk. I will now give a one-minute outline for the lecture for those who came late. Mr. Dieter started talking about the legitim legitimacy and the illegitimacy of the both children of Abraham, and then he talked about